Hello YouTube, this is Kurt and welcome to the Kurt Winters YouTube channel dedicated to bringing you advice on collecting cars and celebrating the history of these amazing machines. Remember, if you like the content of this channel, go ahead and click subscribe, hit that like button and leave a comment. In today's video, we'll be going over the top five mods that I have on my Mitsubishi 3000 GT. Alright, so when I first got my uh, 3000 GT, um, the seats were in terrible condition. Um, every time you sat down, your ass was basically going down to the floor. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I did to the seats um, uh, to modify them to my own taste. Now the seats originally in this car would have been the same sort of charcoal gray leather uh, that matches the rest of the interior. Um, but instead of sticking with uh, the OEM seats, uh, for uh, a few hundred dollars more, I was able to go with the Arctic Snowflake white uh, seats that match the outside of the car. Now, when I was originally picking out these seats, I was really worried that going with white seats and a dark interior uh, was gonna look silly. But I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, leave a comment below if you like the white seats or if you think I should have stuck with the dark instead. Now, one of my favorite things about this seats is not only did they redo the reupholstery, but they did all of the foam and everything from the back support to where your ass sets. So these seats are incredibly comfortable. Um, I can sit in them for hours and not get a backache. And that was one of the surprises uh, when I got the car back and I finally got to sit in it. Now, obviously with white seats, uh, you don't wanna wear blue jeans and you don't wanna wear anything that's gonna be sharp or that could poke uh, into your leather. All right, so when I got this car, it had the original 16 inch rims that came on the SL model, which were kind of a 90s uh, three spoke design. Now, usually I like to stick with OEM rims, but these unfortunately had been rattle can spray painted black. Uh, it looked like in the back of a Pet Boys parking lot. Uh, so I had no choice but to go ahead and change the, the rims. rims are 18 inch uh, by DK Drag and uh, the wheels are 235 40s uh, by Nitto. And I get really good um, response. They're very sticky. And as you can see, uh, they're pretty low profile, um, but I've still got enough rubber uh, to help with the suspension on the car. Um, 18s were the largest rims that you could originally get on this car factory spec. They came on the VR4. And just remember, if you're gonna go with a really uh, thin tire or big rim, that's gonna impact uh, your ride quality. And I like to drive my cars all around town. I like to take them on trips. Uh, some of the roads around here, as you can see, are full of potholes. So I, I didn't want to go any bigger than 18. Remember, your tire is one of the biggest components that contributes to your ride quality and your suspension feel. Remember, if you like this content, go ahead and click subscribe. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything. And while you're at it, go ahead and smash that like button and leave a comment of what you think about the video. Okay, now on this car, one of the other things that had already been changed um, and kind of in the same vein as the wheels that had been painted black, uh, it looked like with spray paint, was somebody had painted the front and back with a black paint job that was terrible. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wrap that I put on it uh, to get it up to Kurt spec. Now, 
when I first got the car, uh, this was painted black from this gold line all the way over to the other gold line. Um, it was poorly done. It was starting to flake and peel and it just looked terrible. Um, obviously the car would have all been white. Uh, so what we chose to do was to go ahead and wrap it instead of repainting it. And I think the wrap turned out well. This car is about nine different shades of white. And if you actually look at it, the white and the wrap matches the uh, body color, but doesn't necessarily match the polyurethane bumper. Um, so that was kind of uh, an unintentional mistake. But again, the car is 25 years old. It's been sitting outside a lot. Uh, she's got about 176,000 miles on her. So we chose the wrap to save money and I really like the way it turned out. All right, so I wanna go ahead and show you how the back wrap turned out. It turned out a little bit better as far as the color match uh, to the bumper. Tell me what you think. So this was painted black all the way around uh, the car. So I hated the way that it looked. Luckily the wrap turned out excellent in my opinion. Um, it matches the body color uh, almost perfectly and from a 20 foot distance, AKA a 20 footer, you can't even tell that it's a wrap. All right, so I know when you guys were watching this section about the wrap that you were wondering, okay, what is going on with the light bar on the front of the car? Um, let me go ahead and show you, let's check it out. Now, originally I wanted to stick with the OEM fog lights uh, for this car. Um, I did some hunting on eBay. I found some different aftermarket parts. Kurt Winters pro tip, don't put used parts on your used car. They're probably gonna fail soon. So what I decided to do, and I gotta be honest, this modification is the most hate that I get on Facebook and on YouTube. They say, what are you doing putting a light bar on the front of your 3000 GT? Um, it's gonna mess up uh, your car's cooling, you're gonna overheat, um, you're gonna blind people, it's illegal. So, you know, that's, that's what haters do, they hate. But what we went with was an 18,000 lumen Cree double stack light bar. Um, it actually has two modes, which I'll show you in a moment. It has a day runner mode and obviously an off-road night runner mode. So let me go ahead and show you how it works. Okay, so because this light bar install was kind of a budget build, um, let me show you how it's operated. One of the first things that I did tell the installer is I did not want a button in cabin. And uh, let me pop the hood and tell you why. Okay, let's go take a look. Okay, so to operate the light bar, we have a auxiliary switch uh, right here uh, next to our fuse box. Um, we have a day runner mode and we have a night runner off-road mode. Now, one of the reasons about why I wanted the switch in the car is A, um, I didn't want to get a nasty case of road rage and flash somebody that I shouldn't. Um, B, I didn't want to run wires any farther than what I had to uh, with an aftermarket switch, which I know they fail all the time. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the day runner mode, uh, which is legal to go ahead and run during the day. Uh, you can see it's not overly bright, but anytime you're in a really low sports car, it's hard for people to see you. And 
Uh, I like to run the day runner uh, when I'm driving around town just to make sure that everyone can see me. Now let's go ahead and let's take a look at the second mode, which is gonna be the off-road mode. Uh, remember, this is 18,000 lumens uh, by a company called Cree, C-R-E-E. -E. And when you run this sucker at night, you light up the entire road. Now, one thing that I do like about it, because of the positioning of how low the light bar is to the car, um, I mean, what, we're sitting about four or five inches off the road. It is more difficult to blind people uh, than what you would think. But if you're coming up a hill or around a corner, um, you are going to impair oncoming traffic visibility. still hanging around just wanted to ask did you exchange a walk-on part in the war for a lead role in the cage okay so I really can't take credit uh, for this mod this is the way the car came but let me go ahead and show you what we've got going on as far as uh, exhaust uh, it's not that uh, fantastic but let's go check it out so if we come down here Looks like we got a Home Depot uh, piece of plumbing pipe that goes straight back. Um, originally this car would have had dual exhaust. Now it's down to uh, one piece of essentially, it looks like a lead pipe. Um, I don't really know. But the other thing that's contributing to that exhaust is uh, another mod, which is under the hood. Let's go take a look. All right, so let me go ahead and show you where it's at under the hood. We've got our Spectre downpipe, uh, which is an aftermarket part that you saw on a ton of 90s cars. Um, normally your air, air filter is gonna be in a box uh, right here. And um, a lot of people say that it detracts horsepower which it actually does if you run the numbers, but you wind up getting that deeper, throatier V6 kind of sound that you just normally don't get out of a three liter. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. We had a ton of fun making it. If you have mods to your 3000 GT or Dodge Stealth, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate the privilege of your time and I'll see you in the next video.